The attraction of warm weather, sand, sea and fun, brought thousands of people to Western Supermare in September 2003 for the World Clown Symposium Festival. My name is Bluey. I am the Secretary of Clowns International, and yes, I am a clown. I'd like to tell you a little about clowning and the people in my world. Described as the greatest show on earth, today the circus continues a long tradition started in 1768. Philip Astley was the father of modern circus. He founded Astley's Riding School on a site on the South Bank London near Hapenny Hatch. Later he rebuilt his circus on the site now occupied by Waterloo Station. The clown has always played an important part in any circus. Today, Zippo Circus provides the last with their two famous clowns, Tweedy and Machu. <laughs> the origins of clowning go back thousands of years. Early ancestors were found in ancient Greece, China and Egypt. In Europe, clowning had its roots in the lives of ordinary people, arising out of rustic festivals and the celebration of the harvest. During the 14th century, fools, or jesters, gained official status in many royal households, often giving them considerable power. During his lifetime, Richard Tarleton won enormous fame as a comic actor and jester to Queen Elizabeth I. In Italy, during the 16th century, a group of players, the Commedia dell'arte, performed plays which introduced such characters as Harlequin, Scaramouche, Pantalone and Punchinella, who in fact got his own show and became Punch. Georgie! What do you want? Oh, I want a kiss. You want a kiss? Yes. That's a kiss. <laughs> Shakespeare's clowns were more genial. They were the first wise fools to cross the Elizabethan stage. Audiences flocked to the theatre to see the clowning of William Kemp, and Robert Armin. Today, one company in particular carries on the tradition of those early touring players who brought comedy and drama to the towns and villages throughout the country. We here at Odd Socks have been performing Shakespeare every year since 1993 and other productions. What's unique about the style with which we do it is that we perform as clowns, as performers, and we make no bones about that. We talk directly to the audience and it allows us to interact with what's happening around us. Being an open air performance, a performance company, we can acknowledge the plane going over in the 21st century while we're stood in our tights and cod pieces. Uh, so in a way we use clowning uh, in terms of talking directly to the audience. We also use slapstick. So although we haven't got the white faces, we have got the bright colourful costumes and we do perform in a very immediate way. Here we are in Odd Socks's props and costume store in Summercoats in Derbyshire. This is where we work from and we send our productions out nationally and sometimes internationally. Um, the beautiful thing about when we do work internationally is our use of clowning actually talks to a foreign audience so they can understand what's being said. We can use slapstick, we can use clowning logic. Uh, all of these things appeal to people who don't perhaps have English as a first language, but also to the five-year-olds in the audience. So we pride ourselves on the fact that we can appeal to five-year-olds, 55-year-olds, 105-year-olds. So we've run the gamut of things, but it, the common link through all, all of these productions, whether it's an Elizabethan, a medieval, or a Victorian production, is our use of interactive clown work with the audience. It breaks down the fourth wall and we find it works very well for us and really keeps people's attention. Today, clowns can be found bringing fun and entertainment to people of all ages. Gordon Rainbow Sharp 
and Gary Sonny Macbeth are professional clowns. Their business, laughter. Before any show, clowns like Sunny and Rainbow can take over an hour to apply their makeup. This is the Clowns Gallery, a museum dedicated to clowns and their history. Hello, I'm uh, Matty Faint. I'm the curator and one of the directors of the Clowns Gallery. I'm standing here by the Clowns International's egg register, which is uh, first started by Stan Bolt, our founder and organizer in 1947. Um, he wasn't a clown himself, he was an analytical chemist that had a great interest in clowns and clowning. And it was his idea to register clowns' faces on real eggs then. So sadly, all his eggs uh, have been broken over the past 50 something years. So these have all been recreated since then. These are pictures of Stan's original collection painted on real eggs. Well, as you would imagine, uh, the gallery is filled with uh, some wonderful um, uh, ephemera from, from the clowning history. This picture I find extremely interesting because it's uh, painted at the time, uh, 1827. It's uh, Joseph Grimaldi's last uh, appearance on stage in costume. Um, sadly, he collapsed halfway through the show, and um, the, there's the doctor standing by him. And um, he had arthritis and lots of uh, his, lots of problems, which made it impossible for him to carry on working. So that's Grimaldi's last performance. Well, here I am standing between two very famous clans: Charlie Caroli, uh, chief clown in the Blackpool Tower Circus for 39 years, and Coco the Clown uh, with Bertram Mill Circus for, for many, many, many years. Um, both very famous for uh, slapstick. And here we have an original slapstick used probably by, <laughs> not Grimaldi, but certainly that, that time in history. There have been many famous clowns in the past, such as Joseph Grimaldi, 1778 to 1837. He is considered to be the father of modern clowning, and he was exclusively a theatrical clown entertainer who elevated the clown to a starring role replacing the then famous Harlequin. He is also the first clown to actually paint his face. He grew up in the theatre and excelled at designing elaborate tricks and special effects. 
The official magazine of Clowns International is named after Joseph Grimaldi and is called the Joey. All clowns are nicknamed Joeys in his honour. Another example is Grock, Adrian Wettock. He was born in Switzerland and he had a mastery of over 23 musical instruments which formed the basis of many of his performances. His farewell appearance was in 1954 and he died aged 79 in Italy in 1959. The third, and perhaps best known in the United Kingdom, was Coco. For many years he appeared with Bertram Mill's Circus. Coco was an auguste, meaning the clown who always got the worst of any situation, the custard pie, the bucket of water, etc. His real name was Nikolai Polyakov, and he was born in Latvia at the turn of the century. Coco is the only clown to be honoured with an MBE for his services to road safety for children. Coco died on the 25th of September, 1974. Every year, from the 1st to the 7th of August, America celebrates International Clown Week. It all began, as you might expect, in the USA in the early 1950s. An American clown, Watt Savage, argued that there were weeks set aside for other things, so why not for clowns? After pressure, in 1970, the then president, President Nixon, signed the proclamation International Clown Week as an official event. A clown's most valuable asset, apart from his face, is his motley, or as you would call it, costume. You can't go into your tailors and pick one off the shelf. For several years now, Heidi has been fitting out dozens of clowns. I'm making a, a waistcoat for ginger nuts. Um, I've been making costumes for clowns for the last 10 years. Um, majority of the clowns like their own fabrics, um, so they stand out and unique. And um, it takes a lot of research trying to find the fabrics, but we find it in the end. When you've got your costume, there is still one more item that no self-respecting clown should be without. Boots. Like the costume, they are special so you have to go to a specialist. These are a few uh, examples of boots that we've made for the BBC for a production, Cry for Bobo. Uh, they submit the coloured drawings, swatches of materials that we use to uh, colour the leather, and then we cut the patterns accordingly for the boots that are being made. I've, obviously these uh, patterns are ones that we don't carry as a stock pattern. So we have to make new ones to correspond with the shapes and designs of what they wanted. And this is how it all started back in 1980. This is the first boot that I made for Clam Bluey, and this is how I got introduced to the art of making clam footwear. It seemed to be a, a gap in the market that was looking for something like this that couldn't be obtained in this country, or, nor in Europe as far as I was aware. And, uh, and since then, we've sent them all over Europe. But there is a manufacturer, I believe, in America, so this is a country that we haven't had to send any to yet. And the style has developed from this into what you see today. But, of course, I'd much prefer to make something much different if that's what they want, rather than the standard boot.
Clowns are not all men. There are many female clowns. The first was recorded in America in 1858. Traditionally, there were different types of clowns, the white face being the oldest and best known. He is the boss, the sensible one. The august clown often has a brightly painted face and coloured wig and large red nose. He is the least intelligent and zaniest of the clowns. Another original clown came from America, and he is the sad tramp or happy hobo clown. The invention of the cinema in the 1890s gave clowns greater scope than they could ever have imagined. People like Buster Keaton and Charlie Chaplin all learned their skills in the circus or music hall. These, among other screen clowns, never die. They are as funny today as they ever were. Clowns have one primary purpose in life, to bring laughter and fun wherever we go. In private life, we are often reserved and sometimes lonely. But once we put on the red nose and floppy boots, the world is turned upside down.